At some point, once using Stable Diffusion and Focus, you will probably find yourself wanting to get a specific pose or a specific pose and mix with things like design or even swap faces. If you want to figure out how to get more consistent characters with Focus and Stable Diffusion, then many of the features that I'm going to be covering in this video will be very useful for that. This video, we're going to be diving into the image prompt feature of Focus. If you've used other tools for Stable Diffusion or Mid Journey, then this chart gives you an idea of the differences between Focus and the others. With Focus, you can mix image and text prompts reliably and perform better in most instances than other interfaces for Stable Diffusion. I cannot confirm if this is true or not in my testing yet, but it is very reliable, I found overall. Now this video assumes you've already have Focus installed and you know the basic usage. If not, I do have other videos that cover that. I'm gonna be doing this with using the regular run.bat file and the default settings and styles, unless I say otherwise. So at this point, Focus is up and running. I have turned on the advanced tab. I've changed over to just quality and the 1024 by 1024 aspect ratio just to make it more consistent with most of the images that I'll be generating here. Now, to use the image prompt feature, we're gonna to wanna to check off the box down below here that says image prompt. I'm gonna show you the basic image prompt first, then we'll move on to the advanced stuff immediately. This, uh, you're probably gonna use the advanced for the most part. Now, in this, I'm gonna use a specific image. Now, you can drag the images from up above for these as well. I'm gonna use this woman in a red dress dancing in a field and the idea of the image prompt is this is going to influence the generated image. It won't look exactly the same, but it should carry over things like the, the color in that she's wearing a dress, a similar looking woman in the field. Those sorts of things are going to pretty much carry over for most of the images you generate. Okay, as you can see, we have two images generated and both of them red dress, similar looking woman. Even the dress itself is very similar. Uh, the poses are slightly different. The background is different, but it's still the same idea for the picture. So you can see how that would influence that generation. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate that this isn't always gonna be the case. And this is where the advanced features will come in. I'm gonna drop this as a TARDIS from Doctor Who. And I'm going to go ahead and generate and again, not putting any text in the prompt, you can, and I'll cover that afterwards. But just for this purpose, I'm going to demonstrate how this doesn't influence the image as you might expect it would. Okay, as you can see in this image, did not influence it too much. It did influence the color a little and I don't know if anything else. Now. I'm not gonna dive into this a lot because the advanced features really make this stuff there, it doesn't really matter that much. But I am gonna show you one more. Now you can mix and match multiple pictures to try to influence, but you're gonna get unreliable results. Let's just put it that way. Now I'll show you one more example just uh, now for here. I'm gonna actually add a text prompt, but I've dropped the picture of the dog down here just to show what this will do. Now, what it should do is generate a picture of a cat with similar colors as this dog. As you can see, one of these was more influenced than the other, but the still, you can see the sun in the background is influenced on this image and this image. It won't always influence everything. So that's the reason why just the basic image prompt isn't necessarily as useful for myself, at least. I don't ever really use it because with the advanced controls, which I'm gonna show you next, there's really not much reason to use this, but I did wanna cover it. Okay, at this point, we're gonna move ahead to the advanced features because I honestly think that's what you're gonna be using. You're gonna find that you really have no interest in the basic. So we're gonna go down here at the bottom and we're gonna check off advanced. Now you will see more options come up. Um, you're gonna have these two sliders and you'll have these options down here, which I will cover. Now, the first option was the image prompt, which we were already using. Then you have stop at and the wait slider. Now think of those as, well, think of the stop at is all about timing. It determines when the influence on your image prompt will stop during the generation process. When it gets to 0.5, which is what it's set at here, the prompt's influence at that point ends. And 
Stable Diffusion takes over and generates from there. So the later you stop that, the more influence that's going to have on your image generation. Now let's talk about the weight. The setting is like a volume control for your image prompt. The higher the weight means that your prompt will have a stronger impact on the generated image. It's like turning up the dial on how much you want your prompt shapes, the style, composition, or other aspects of your final image. Usually I start with the defaults and I start playing around with them to get what I want. A lot of this is gonna be trial and error when it comes to those things, but always start with the defaults and go from there. So on here, I'm actually gonna do another image prompt, but I'm gonna change a couple things here. We're gonna actually increase the weight and I'm also gonna increase the stop at to a higher amount. So let's see what happens when we do that compared to these original two images. And I'm gonna put cat in here as well, just like we did before. Okay, so the image generation is done. As, as you can see in this one, this had much more influence on the image, almost had a hard time even creating it as a cat it did switch over at the end and was able to force that. So keep that in mind. If we had stopped it at a much higher amount, it would have probably had a much harder time creating that cat at that point. The weight itself was more with the color and everything else with the background image. It stuck with a much similar picture. So that's how your, your, your stop at and the weight works. It works the same for pretty much all of these. Now, the next two I'm going to cover are Pirate Canning and CPDS. I'll cover them to, somewhat together because they do similar things. I'll try to not get, I'm not going to get technical on these. But what these are used for is to bring over the structure of an image. Maybe you want a certain pose or you want a house to look a certain way or something like that. You can bring an image in. And unlike with the image prompt, which we brought before, which... Well, perfect example was the woman dancing. That would influence the image, but the pose itself wouldn't be influenced. This is where the Pirate Candy and CPDS can come in because the way that they work, well, Pirate Candy breaks it down to the outlines. It Think of it as more like a coloring book. If you look at this image on the left, you have the original image of the house, and on the right, you have the outlines. That's similar to what Pirate Candy does. The influence of how much detail is brought over when doing that is determined by the weight and the stop at. Those do have influences on that. So if you want to increase or lower the weight, you're going to get more or less detail. The same idea with the stop at is how long that's going to influence the original image. Once at 0.5, once it gets halfway through, then it stops using that Im original image and it generates from there. Now, CPDS works for the same similar purpose, but the difference with that is instead of doing the outlines, it decolorizes the image. As you can see on this page, these are the uh, original images and the resulting images over here. This can be better for certain images, whereas the pirate can be better for other images. They both have their advantages and disadvantages, and a lot of it will come down to trial and error on which one works better for which. You know, pirate candy is great for capturing and reproducing finer details and clear lines from an image. Uh, for instance, if you have a picture of a bunny and you want to keep the exact proportions in a new style, pirate candy can, would be the tool to use. CPDS would be more suitable when you want to transfer complex scenes or poses from one image to another, maintaining the general shape and depth, but not necessarily the fine details. So experiment with the two. I usually, if I don't get the results I want from one, I'll try the other one to see if that method works better for what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, so for these examples, I'm gonna try a few different things just to give you a basic idea of all the different things you can do to mix and match all these things, because you can mix and match them. You don't really want to mix and match Pyre Canny and CPDS, I don't think, from my understanding, and I don't. Usually you just want one of those in one of these image prompts, but then you could have an image prompt, you could have the Pyre Canny, a face swap, which we'll cover next. You could have, you know, so you can mix and match these. 
So for this one, I'm actually just going to show you, let's go with the uh, this house and Pirate Canny. And I'm not going to touch anything else. Now, I could generate just with that, but that's you're not going to really be doing that to that. You're going to be mixing it with text prompts, other prompts. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So let's say we have a house. I want a house that's look similar to this. Um, and, but let's say I want it in a lush forest. So we're going to put a house in a lush forest. And we're going to go ahead and generate a couple images here. Actually, I want to just change this over to speed just to make this a little bit quicker for myself. We're going to generate some images. So for this one, we, um, as I said, we have Pyrocanny. We set it at the default settings, which has a weight of one, and then the stop at 0.5 or halfway. Now, depending on what you set these at, and I'm going to show you this. Well, I'll leave these going for right now. I'm going to show you what you get for a result. And then I'll show you how you can adjust the settings or how the settings being adjusted will impact the results that you get from this. So now, just like Stable Diffusion itself, you're always going to have you know, varying results. And so we see the first one, it actually came in with a pretty good forest around it. The other one, not so much. We can actually change how that might be impacted. Now, the problem is, now if you look at it, the house actually looks pretty similar to the actual, you know, same structure idea. As you can see, chimney. Now, this one added a chimney here. So just like regular stable diffusion, it's going to add things. So just keep that in mind. I'm also keeping in a very simple prompt. So that would be another factor. So let's go in here, and I'm actually going to show you a difference here. We're going to stop this at 0.2, just to give you an idea. We're going to use the same weight. We're going to just stop at a point two. I'm going to give you a general idea of how that can change the picture. So now we see where it stopped using the influence and it's generating from there. So as you can see, definitely not really that close. I mean, it, it keeps the, the house in the middle, things like that. But otherwise, it's going to lower that influence because as you can see here, it starts off and you're like, oh, wow, that's actually looking like the house. But you're going to be able to see almost in boom right there, it changes and you lose that influence in the prompt. So the further along that you are, the more it's going to look like the original picture. The problem is if you're trying to make something too radically different, it's going to have a harder time creating that. So now let's crank that way up and we're going to actually crank that to almost all the way to one. And we're going to generate. Now we'll see the difference on this. Notice pretty quickly that it's going to keep even the clouds, as you can see here, these clouds also line up in here. So it's going to keep pretty close to that picture up until the very end. And then may add some variation, but usually towards the end is when it only adds the minor details. So you're not going to have anything drastic change um, on the image when you set the stop at that much higher. Now you can mix these with styles. That's another thing to keep in mind. These things can all be mixed with styles as well. So now as you can see with this one, it actually did a pretty decent job even with the influence set, you know, the stop at set very high, but it's still stuck with even that bush, is, that small tree is back here. So you get an idea, play with these, get an idea of what they do. And we'll, we'll stop this one. Let's go with the uh, five and I'll just show you the difference. We're going to put the weight down here and we'll generate again. So as you can see in this image, it, you know, the weight is much less. You can see the house is different and it much lusher for us. So you can play with these settings to get an idea once you know what you want. Okay, so we're going to actually use this one here, this woman dancing in the field. Now, I picked this one because it wasn't a, you know, standard pose. That would be a very hard pose if you wanted to get that uh, consistently with diff try different clothing styles or different people. That would be very hard to describe 
in the prompt. So this is where this sort of thing comes in handy. So we're gonna put on the CPDS for this one. Um, like I said, try different things. They're all different. The other thing to keep in mind is the less other details in the picture, like in this one, we're trying to go with, let's say if we just mostly wanted the pose, we would probably want a picture even better would be without any trees in the background or anything. If you could get, now the other thing is, let's say you don't want the person wearing a dress. That's the reason I didn't use the dress one, because if you use the dress one, it's actually that outline of that dress is actually gonna impact the prompt. So you're better off using one that doesn't have, you know, it, it keeps a general body shape as I'll demonstrate here. Now let's say a warrior dancing in the forest. So here we go with this one and we're gonna see what that does. So like I said, we only put the CPDS on and that's the one that uses the decolorization. We're gonna have a stop at 50 and we have the weight set on one, which are the default settings. Now, as we can see here, it's generating, we have that same pose. You know, now it will vary slightly, but I find in most cases, if you have a good source image and everything, the pose will be there almost every time for pretty closely. The hands might be slightly different, things like that. So if you really want a picture preferably that doesn't have anything in the background. So in these two, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty exact to the original. And it's also in pretty much the same spot and everything else. So now let's say we had the pose, but let's say we also want to have a certain style. Um, and what we could do there is, so let's say we wanted, we, we could describe it but it might be easier to actually just drop another image in. So in this one, I'm gonna actually to drop this image in here and we're gonna use this as the image prompt. So remember that influences the look. This one we're gonna leave for the pose. Now that we have those set, I'm actually gonna remove the prompt, the text prompt, because I wanna show what the image prompt does here. So as I said, this over here is gonna be more the structure of the image. This over here is going to be more the style, the color, and all that. Now, I am going to increase the weight on this one just because I, I don't have any other text or anything like that. So I'm actually just going to increase that a bit, little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. Okay, so as you can see, we have a similar style as the one on the right in the pose and the structure of the image from the image on the left, which is using the CPDS. Now we could use the Pirate Candy potentially in this. Like I said, it's they're both doing the similar things, it's just how they do it is different. One thing we'll notice here is there's no other, I, I don't have anything else in the text prompt. So these are the only two things that are being influenced it. But let's say I wanted to influence that and I want to say a warrior with the sword. Now I'm not saying dancing or anything like that. It should carry over the structure and everything. So I shouldn't even have to worry about that. I could put that in there if I want to. Okay, so as we can see in these images, it's added a sword. Now it keeps the same, you know, pose. It, the, the style and everything is taken from the one on the right. Now I did, you could generate 50 of these. It, I generated, a, testing them earlier, and in all honesty, I generated a whole bunch of them. Um, these are just some of the images. So as you can see, it's it, it's pretty consistent on the results that you can get. If you're not getting the right results, consider that your image that you're using for the source may not be good enough. You may have too much background clutter. I Even, you know, you add an image with a watermark on it, you may get some weird effects from that as well. So these are the things to keep in mind when you're doing this. Okay, now for the last thing I'm gonna show, I'm actually gonna go back to just show the face swap down here in the image prompt. I'm not gonna use, you can mix this with the other things I've already showed you. Like I said, you can mix and match those how you want with text prompts, styles and everything. But for this, I just wanna demonstrate how this works. For this one, I'm gonna start off with, let's say this image here 
And I'm just going to put in a woman, oh, can't even type, with black hair. So I didn't get any de more detail than that. Now the idea behind this is that face should look pretty close. Now we haven't cranked the weight up and we didn't, you know, the, the stop at's already pretty high with these, the idea behind it. That's gonna remember more of the structure of the face. I always start off with the default and then I'll increase it if I find it necessary to get what I'm looking for. Like I said, I always start with the default because those are usually your best, the, the, those are usually set at what they found with the best settings. Looking at those, I would say they're actually, you know, they're pretty close. They're not always gonna be exact. And like I said, you can increase the weight but I'm also gonna show this, and we're gonna actually just change the face in here, and we haven't changed the prompt at all. As you can see, this definitely influenced it. Now, it obviously, like I said, it's not gonna always get them exactly the same, and that's something you can use multiple. If you have two, three, four different face angles, so you could add another one in there with a different angle that will improve the results that you get. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers everything in the image prompts as far as the basics and the advanced, but not the extreme advanced. There's a lot more we could get into mixing and matching. And I'll probably cover some of those things in later videos when it comes to consistent characters and things like that. The biggest thing when it comes to any of these is to experiment. And if you don't get good results, make sure you're keeping your prompts simple. You know, try different images. Uh, low quality images, I find, don't always work well. So if you're trying to use a pose with a low quality image and there's a lot of pixelation or anything like that, that could really negatively impact the results that you get. I hope that you'll learn something from this. I My next video actually is probably is gonna be on the in-painting and out-painting. Hopefully I'll have that probably within the next uh, four to six days. Um, that's going to take a little bit longer to produce um, like this one did. And then I do hope to have some even more advanced tutorials uh, at a later date with, like I said, consistent characters and things like that. So thanks for watching and have a good day. See you next time.